Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be talking all about tomatoes. It's going to be a lot of fun because I love tomatoes. So I thought this was a great one to do right now because we're thinking about tomatoes and we're going to be getting ready to start them soon. So I thought now was a good time to do it. I know it sounds like we're a long ways away from tomatoes and we are a long ways away from planting them out in the garden, unfortunately. But tomatoes are one of those things that we start indoors way ahead of time. So we're actually starting our tomatoes uh, within the next few weeks and mm -hmm. our peppers as well. And now's the time that a lot of people are ordering their tomato seeds and trying to figure out what tomatoes they want to grow. So today we're going to try and do our best to cover the different types of tomatoes that we carry at Park Seed and which ones are best for different uh, occasions and different reasons. And also talk about some tips for growing some tomatoes as well. And before I forget, we need to mention that we have a big contest going today as well. Uh, so all you have to do to join the, uh, to enter is to join the discussion, just leave a comment and you will be entered to win. So uh, today we're giving away a park seed biodome. Yeah, these. we actually have, we actually use these in our seed starting area a lot. We absolutely love them. So it's this really nice seed starting system that has this super heavy duty <laughs> lid and all of it's super heavy duty and these vents here so you can control how much moisture is in there. We'll be talking a little bit about them coming up in a bit too, because we're that's how we start all of our tomatoes. So, um, And we'll talk a little bit about how best best ways to go about starting your tomatoes and tips and tricks. And yeah. And also giving away a one-year membership to the Seed to Spoon app, a premium yes. membership. So with that, now we'll come with also with free shipping. So uh, we're excited to announce that one year a membership to, to Seed to Spoon app now also includes free shipping from anything you buy from within the app. So we're really excited about that. I think it's the first time announcing it. I know, and yeah. it's exciting. <laughs> um, if you don't already have our app, make sure you check it out. Um, we have a QR code up in the top corner. And if you scan that, it'll take you easy um, to our download pages. Um, download for free. And it has all sorts of great information, planting dates and companion plantings and pests and I could go on and on about all the information that's in there. So, yep. And you can keep track of your garden. We're keep, keeping track of all the seeds. We're, we're starting thousands of seeds right now. We're keeping track of all of them in our app. Mm -hmm. So we know what's what and when we need to expect something to sprout. According to the app, my broccoli will be sprouting any day. Uh, it's exciting. Yes, today yeah. is actually the first day. So I know. Today, I checked this morning. It checked? was like Christmas. It didn't. Oh. <laughs> okay, so let's jump in. Well, and first start. Of all, I don't think we introduced ourselves. We didn't. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about I that. always do that. I just jump right in and just start talking to you guys. <laughs> so um, my bad. <laughs> um, so I'm Carrie. This is my husband Dale. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We are the creators of the From Seed to Spoon mobile app. So we started gardening in 2016 and just fell in love with it and everything associated. So we just. Yeah, we turned our entire backyard into gardens, and uh, it was really fun. <laughs> this is our yard when we started gardening, and this was it a couple of years later. So you can see we, we got obsessed. Yes. And we wanted to make our app to make it easy for other people to grow food as well. So it is built to tell you when to plant based on your nearest weather station and uh, companion plants and lots of tomato information in there as well. Mm -hmm. So we're in Oklahoma in Zone 7. Um, I would love to hear from you guys where you guys are from. Enter the chat. Say hi to us. I'd love to see you all in there. And uh, we're going to be talking about tomatoes, too, for like northern areas and southern areas. So and some in between. So we're going to be hitting everything. Hopefully there's somebody something in here for everybody. <laughs> and also, we welcome you to join in the chat, too. So we're going to be talking, talking about different topics of tomatoes. If you have favorites that are not on the list. Throw them in chat. Let us know. Um, there, we, we carry so many tomatoes at Park Seed, and there, we did our best to go yeah, through and choose our favorites. Yeah, there was at least 100 different <laughs> tomatoes, and just going through them and trying to figure out which ones are the best for for pizza, which ones are the best for sauce, and <laughs> went, oh man, it was just, yeah, there were so many to choose from. So a lot are left off the list. So if there's one that you guys love, please share it in there. I would love to see it. We were debating to the last minute on this. Yeah, yeah. seriously, we were. 
All right, let's jump in and talk about tomatoes. Oh, we should have shown this we're talking about the giveaway. Oh, yeah. didn't follow the PowerPoint. All right, <laughs> so let's talk about some seed starting tips first. We've covered this pretty in depth the past few workshops that we've done. So if you missed those, uh, go check that out. So we're not going to talk too much about it, but some things specific to tomatoes with seed starting are, number one, the biodome makes it a lot easier. So we use the biodome for pretty much all of our peppers and our tomatoes because it helps control the humidity and we use a heat mat in combination with that as well to control the temperature and if you do not use any of that with peppers or tomatoes then it's going to take a long time for them to sprout and if you do use that then it well, it doesn't take very long at all. Yeah, I was going to say, because people always say, well, do I have to have a heat mat? I'm like, well, technically you don't, but it is going to make your life a lot easier and it's going to go a lot faster. Your tomatoes are going to do better. It's just going to be overall a lot easier to, to grow them. Definitely recommend a heat mat. Yeah, and they have they have small ones in at Park that are actually pretty cheap. So if you were looking for one, I know that there's a there's a smaller one in there that you can get that would fit a biodome perfect. I should have had that up as a link. Didn't yeah. even think about that. <laughs> you know, and a seed starting tip too is use high quality seeds. Mm -hmm. So um, you're going to have more success. You're only going to have to use one seed per sponge if you're using high, like seeds from our app. They're stored in a refrigerated uh, giant warehouse out in South Carolina until you order them. And then they are packed and sent to you right after that. So they're just stored in a much different environment than ones you buy off the shelf. Um, they go through rigorous testing. There's just a lot that goes into it when you shop from a place that has high quality seeds like that. So that's another seed starting tip I'll throw out there as well that we yeah. learned like when we joined Park Seed and we got, we were so used to putting three seeds in every single one. Yeah. So I started out with doing that with the Park Seeds and every single one would germinate. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'd have to go through and thin and <laughs> yeah. do all this work. But now I just put in one seed in each area and I'm good to go. And that'll result in healthier plants too, healthier adult plants. And it'll save yourself a lot of frustration because we've been there in the early years with tomatoes where we, grow our, our tomatoes all the way um, to where they're about to harvest. And then there's some sort of an issue that comes up because we started with something that um, that wasn't so good. Or maybe, you know, there's tomatoes can be sensitive. We'll talk about that later on. Some of our tomato sad stories. We'll save that <laughs> for the end, though. <laughs> okay. So, again, we talked all about seed starting the past couple of weeks. So, so if you miss those, make sure you check it out. Um, we have all of our – all of these are recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. So. If you are watching from YouTube, you know where you are. So. Okay. So, so first of all, there are two different types of tomatoes. There are what you can be, blah, I can't even talk. So I'm sure you've heard these terms before, the indeterminate and determinate, especially if you're like at a nursery looking at tomatoes or anything like that. And it's really important to know the difference between those and know what area you have to grow in your backyard or patio or wherever it is you're growing. So just a few differences between them. So indeterminate is going to be more of the ones that are vining. They're really tall. Typically you're going to need some sort of trellis or support, something like that for them to grow up because they can get super tall, like six feet tall, you know, like vining. Um, I love it. It grows great, but you definitely need space to grow them. Um, and these ones will produce fruit all season long, um, which is good for like snacking or slicing too. If you want them for like your sandwiches or hamburger, or ham yeah, hamburgers, <laughs> yeah, anything like that. And then determinate are ones that are going to be more bushy. So they are typically the smaller ones. So if you are going to be growing on like a patio or container garden, things like that, typically you're going to want to look at the determinate ones. Now there are some smaller other ones that we'll talk about here in a bit. Um, but determinates are usually the ones who are a little bit shorter. They have more bushy like, and these ones typically will produce fruit all at once. So these are great for things like canning or pasta sauces, things like that. Awesome. So let's jump in and talk about first uh, first category here, container tomatoes. Yeah. So, and again, there was a lot of container tomatoes to sort through <laughs> at Park. Like there was, I kid you not, like um, this patio choice down at the bottom. I, I loved the looks of this one because I had to I had to include the yellow one because I thought it was really pretty. 
Um, cause, and unique. I love growing unique things and all of that, but there's all sorts of different colors of it. So there's red, orange, yellow. So there's pretty much like every color you can imagine, which is amazing. So they have all these certain tomatoes that are bred to be small in containers. They are perfect for um, people with small spaces, decks. Um, if you're going to be putting them in maybe like a hanging pot or something like that, these would do really well, especially this uh, tumbling tom yellow, that one in the middle, the top middle. That one would do really well too in a hanging pot. Um, yeah, these are all really good ones. Oh, and I do want to call out too the Red Torch because we actually noticed this like two minutes before we went live. We were looking at Park's website <coughs> and we saw that Red Torch was actually 50% off. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. So check that out if you were interested in the Red Torch ones. I know there's a lot of different seed varieties that they have in there that are on sale and several tomatoes too, I noticed. So I don't remember all the specific ones, but I know that Red Torch was on there because I saw that like Two minutes before we went live. <laughs> yeah, and if you just go to the homepage of Park Seed, there's a big banner at the very top right now that has all the all the seeds that are 50% off. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, there's a whole bunch of different tomato or, that are great for containers on there, but these are just a few that popped out to us that we thought would be the best to mention. And it's a great place to start, too, if you're new to growing tomatoes. Mm -hmm. They're usually going to be a little easier than some of the larger tomatoes that you grow out in the garden. So definitely recommend container tomatoes. Yeah. So also I wanted to call out the heirloom varieties too, because these ones are like the tried and true tomatoes. They've been grown for years and years and years. And um, these are probably the ones that, you know, like your grandparents were growing back in the day. So these are the ones that are going to be you know, super, you know them really well. They're going to be super disease resistant and pest resistant, things like that. So these ones are super healthy. They do wonderful. Um, so I wanted to make sure I called out a few heirloom varieties as well. I know and red torches on there too, again. Wow. My goodness. Um, but yeah, so San Marzano, I know is one that, that we always mentioned the Cherokee purple. I love Cherokee purple. Yeah, both of these are going to be throughout the rest of the list a little bit. Spoiler alert. I know. And this rainbow blend one as well. It is amazing. And if you can tell by the by the picture, it's great for slicing, which I will mention in a minute too. But I like having um, different, different types in um, colors, especially. I know if you guys have been on any of the workshops in the past, you know I love the purple ones. So, <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that Cherokee purple and rainbow blend, they're just really unique ones and they're super healthy, um, healthy plants and great options. So pasta sauce. So these ones are going to be generally, um, if you are looking for tomatoes to use for pasta or for canning and things like that, these ones are going to be great options for you. Um, these ones are going to be the ones that will produce generally like all at once or anything like that. Um, yeah, so these, these ones are really good options for those. I know our personal favorite here is the Roma. I mean, you, it's tried and true. You can't go wrong with, with Roma. Um, that's generally the one that we grow a whole bunch in our garden. Yeah, and the way that we usually grow them is with uh, like a tomato cage. So a yes. lot of the things that oh, we grow. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, are going to be um, like a lot of the tomatoes we grow, like the Parks Bob, where we grow those on cattle panels or some sort of large structure. And the Romas and the San Marzanos and all of those, we actually grow with. I'm trying to find a picture of one. Darn that picture didn't pull up there. Um, but T Park has these really nice tomato cages that fold flat and they're super durable. They're going to last a long they're time. They're square. I really like the square ones mm -hmm. because they seem, it seems to be stronger than the normal ones. I know we have a whole bunch of the round ones that are literally like broken off in certain areas, but all of our square ones are still in perfect condition. And I think yeah. it's because of the storing thing, like you said, cause they do store flat. Mm -hmm. It makes it, uh, makes them last a lot longer. But uh, that is my favorite way to grow tomatoes though, is with like a determinate cage or something in the grow, either a Roma or a San Marzano. I'm really excited to try the, um, that's, that's on the slide. Come on. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> so I'm, but that's my favorite way to grow tomatoes and you get a whole bunch at once and then you can go through and you can make, um, 
you can make uh, you can make pasta from it. You can make like I love making pizza. spaghetti sauce. Yeah. Yeah, we make our own homemade pizzas a lot and stuff like that. And I really miss it right now because I really miss basil, especially right now, and tomatoes <laughs> and all the fresh stuff from our garden. Because I've been cooking a lot of that stuff lately and having to buy it from the store. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for us to be able to actually grow these again. Yeah, it's only like four or five months away from having tomatoes out of the garden. <laughs> Okay, so salsa tomatoes. Um, just a few that I wanted to call out in particular. Um, so whenever we grew a salsa garden this last year, we actually grew the Roma and the Parks Whopper and used those in our salsa that we made. And it worked amazing. I absolutely loved it. Um, but so those ones are great options for tomatoes. Um, if you haven't tried out the Parks Whopper, you definitely need to because that one is just a tried and true tomato. It is amazing. It's been around for how long has it been around? Do you remember that year? I, you you oh, typically man. remember things like that. I so know. that's why I asked you. Fill the quiz. <laughs> oh, man. Pop quiz. I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's been around for a very, very long time. Um, and it's just one that has been, it's super disease resistant, pest resistant, things like that. So it's one that we love to grow in our yard. It grows really large, really great plump tomatoes. I love it. Um, and then, so the park seed legacy was another one. And then the sun sugar hybrid, I wanted to call out those two, um, because those are great for salsas too. And I love having like different colors sometimes too. That's why I wanted to include like more of a yellow orange one too, because it'll bring more of a sweeter taste as well. And just different colors in your salsa. I like having different colors in there. And then the slicing tomatoes. I know we talked a little bit about these already, but these are going to be the ones, again, that, that grow the really large, plump ones. And the Parks Whopper is definitely going to be, like, one of my favorite ones to do. Okay, we got a crying baby. We have a crying baby. I'm okay. going to go grab, so she's taking over the PowerPoint. Okay. I'll be right back. Yep. <laughs> okay. So we have, um, yeah, the Park Swapper is probably my favorite for the slicing just because um, that's the one I, I grow all the time for it. It's really large, plump, easy to get really perfectly sliced, sliced areas for your ham or for your hamburgers, for your sandwiches, all of that. And then I loved this one, the Mater Sandwich Hybrid too. It sounded perfect for a sandwich and for slicing. And then the Big Yummy, the Chef's Choice Pink Girl, Fireworks. These ones are all really good slicing tomatoes. So these are the ones, again, that grow real large. Um, those are going to be really good options for you to have in your garden if you want them for sandwiches and things like that. And then cherry tomatoes. I absolutely love these ones. So these ones I typically recommend to beginners whenever people are just getting started because cherry tomatoes tend to grow a lot easier for people. Um, I, at least for us too. When we were first starting out with tomatoes, we noticed that whenever we were growing like the really large ones, we would sometimes have issues growing them to completion just because like birds would get them or something would always seem to happen like right at the end, right when we were about to pull them. Um, so if you don't really have a lot of time, um, these cherry tomatoes are great. They're also good because you can harvest them a lot faster too, which is great. You can have them, um, real, real fast and real quick early in the season. And generally these ones are great for snacking. Um, a lot of these don't even make it into our house because our kids will go out into the garden and just start pulling the cherry tomatoes off and just popping them in their mouth. They are amazing directly off of the vine. Um, and I want to call out, especially this chocolate cherry one. Um, it is one that is super unique and the kids loved growing this one just because it had chocolate in the name. They thought it was just the coolest thing ever. They thought it was amazing. Um, but they, they were, they were surprised that it did not taste like chocolate, <laughs> but it was really sweet and they did like it, but they were, they thought it was funny that, uh, it did not taste like chocolate and they expected it to taste exactly like chocolate, I think. Um, 
Two other ones that I really wanted to call out um, that are actually new this year to parks. It's the uh, the Junior Whopper Red and then the Junior Whopper Pink. So these ones have um, just like that Parks Whopper, that really large one, but these ones are going to be more of the snack sized. So, um, and also like binding, it's going to be really tasty, small little ones that you can snack on and add to wraps or anything like that. Like these ones will be great, really good producers for you. And then the unique tomatoes. Again, I had to include the chocolate cherry on here too, because that was whenever I was first looking at all of the tomatoes a few years ago, whenever we first joined park, we, they, I came across this chocolate cherry and I was like, what? I have never heard of that before. And it was one that I definitely had to do because, you know, because of the name, it sounds super fun and it's so pretty and it got the kids excited about it too. So it was a really fun one to do. Um, and then some other unique tomatoes, I had to include some of the more colorful ones. So like the purple boy, the purple zebra, and then the big rainbow ones. Those are fun too. And then the Sparky XSL. Um, this one is our tomatoes that are super, super tiny. Um, and so these would be so perfect to just harvest directly off the vine and just pop into like a wrap or a burrito or something, something like that. And they would be perfect size for that. They're just real tiny and petite. I love them. Got a little baby we're adding in, huh? He wanted to be part of it. Yeah, he was mad we were doing it without him. I'm sorry. We should have invited you. <laughs> he invited himself. He's here. <laughs> Um, so we also wanted to touch briefly on just a few different climates, just because we know that not everybody can grow everything in their specific areas that they are. And so the northern climates, we pulled a few of these tomatoes that are more of um, like shorter growing seasons. So typically these are ones that produce a lot faster um, and so that's, that's why we picked these ones. So the park seed season starter, that's going to be one that, you know, really quickly will give you a harvest of tomatoes as well as early girl. That's another really great one for Northern climates. Um, and then these other ones too are just some different varieties that you can, that you can grow up North that would thrive in just the shorter growing season. <laughs> And then um, Southern climates as well. Uh, we pulled out a few of these favorites, the Cherokee Purple, Dixie Red, Carolina Gold. I mean, you can kind of tell by the names of these that they would be perfect for Southern climates. And these ones will be great in like the heat and they tend to take the heat and dryness a little bit better, if you like. Yeah, the one I saw in here, Fantastico, mm -hmm. was one that looked really exciting to, to try out this year, especially. Yeah, because, um, yeah, we, we live in Oklahoma, so we're typically yeah. more on the southern area of, uh, of the country, so we get a lot of heat here. It gets pretty hot. Yeah, one other I'll call out that didn't quite make the list but was close was Juliet. Um, that's another one that we grow a lot in the summer as well. Yeah. Okay. So we, we wanted to touch briefly, too, on a few just growing tips for tomatoes as well. Um, so a few pests that you are going to see in tomatoes are going to be these, this dreaded tomato hornworm. Now, if you have never seen it, you will be terrified when you first <laughs> see it. Honestly, it, it, you will be super surprised how it blends in. Also, it is huge. Like it's probably like, I don't know if you can, I don't know. It's probably like about this big. It is very thick, like it is a really large hornworm, and uh, and it has this little like pointer on the back end of it that it looks like it would attack you, but it it definitely doesn't. But it just it looks vicious, <laughs> and I don't like them at all. I will say that, but they blend in for how large they are. They really blend into your plants. So if you notice that your tomatoes suddenly start to lose like leaves or their foliage starts to disappear, and you see a lot more a um, lot more vines than normal, 
you probably have a hornworm. So you need to go on the hunt for them. Um, typically what we do is hand pick, um, our chickens love them. So they get a nice treat if, if we ever find them. Um, now I will say in the very middle, you'll see that's a hornworm that has these like white eggs on them. That's actually a good thing. If you see that, I know it's, it's a very sad thing, but they are, um, the eggs of wasps that attack this tomato hornworm. And so if you see that, it's actually a good thing and you want to leave it there. <laughs> so it'll hatch more wasps for you. And those wasps will go to work for you attacking other hornworms. So. And there is a spray that we sell called BTK. that is a naturally occurring soil bacteria that you can spray on your plants. And it kills caterpillars when they eat it. And it's completely safe for humans and everything else as well. So that is something you can use to, for any caterpillar issue. Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely used that before when I found like four or five of them in one day on a, <laughs> on a tomato plant last year. Um, yeah. So that's definitely probably one of the biggest things that you'll see um, that's unique to tomatoes. Um, other things that you might see are the um, are aphids. So aphids are just a little teeny tiny um, little pests that you see in this picture right here. Um, and they are pretty easily handled. Um, typically we just spray the bottom of leaves wherever they're at. And if we knock them off, they can't get back up. So, um, generally if we see an aphid issue, we just spray the underside with some water, um, or just let our ladybugs handle it because ladybugs absolutely love to devour aphids. They're amazing. In the summer, you'll have some spider mite issues as well. Um, that's something we typically see. Um, but I think, you know, the biggest thing there is have healthy plants and to make sure you're not overwatering. That's a big deal, too. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Take over handling that. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of these pest issues, too, will be helped by companion planting as well. So whenever we plant out our tomatoes, the biggest things that we like to put next to them, of course, is basil. That's our favorite companion pair. Um, well, I do basil and marigold. And typically, I plant like three, all three together. I do a tomato and then a basil and a marigold, like every single time. Um, and then these other ones I like to throw in every once in a while, too. But um, basil especially is just an amazing companion plant. It helps to repel many different pests as well as just make the tomatoes taste better. So it's, it's fantastic. It's probably my favorite and I always grow cinnamon basil too. So <laughs> it yeah. looks pretty. Oregano too, like really suits growing with tomatoes well, cause it's more of a ground cover. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And so I, I will say a lot of these, um, I mean, these are, this is obviously not the be all and end all for companion plants. There's a lot of great companion plants. We have all of the companion plants listed to on our app. So if you go to tomatoes and you go down to, to friends, it'll show you all the different friends that you can grow next to it. And then fertilizers. Um, we did want to mention fertilizer because that's always a common question. People ask how to fertilize, when to fertilize, what do I fertilize with? Um, so I wanted to make sure that I called out, this is the fertilizer that we use in our garden. It's the, um, the Espoma tomato tone fertilizer. And we do that in with um, our tomatoes. We also use it for our peppers and eggplants, things like that as well. Um, generally, we'll put this out um, about two weeks after we transplant them. And then we continue about every, every two to three weeks or so, we'll add a little bit more to the soil around it. And it does really well for those tomato plants. Okay. One thing I, that I, I realized we did not talk about that I did see a few people pop up in there about um, growing in containers. Um, I meant, I, I was going to mention smart pots and I didn't pop a picture up in there. Um, yeah, I think it's good to cover a little bit more about containers and like the different ways that we like to grow, where we like to grow tomatoes. Yeah. So those container varieties, I, we grow a lot of things in raised beds and in containers and we use smart pots. These are, if you haven't heard of them, they're amazing. They're these fabric raised beds um, and containers that are just super strong, super durable. The plants do amazing in them. 
And I absolutely love putting them into those, especially for tomatoes, because if we do have an issue, then we can, like if there's like an early frost or something like that, and tomatoes can be really sensitive for things like that. So um, if we do have an issue, we can just take the smart pot and then carry it over and then um, bring it over to uh, like the, our patio area if we have like hail coming in or put it in our garage if we have like a frost coming in, you know, things like that. So we absolutely love having those because they have handles, super easy to carry and move around. I, I love them. Um, so yeah, that was definitely something that I wanted to call out. Um, typically the sizes, it, it's going to vary on what size container that you want to use for, um, for these varieties. Now for the smaller varieties, you could probably get away with doing a smaller gallon, um, of them, but typically what we recommend doing is doing one of the larger sized pots. They are about, um, the, I, we do them in like a 20 gallon one, which is actually pretty large, but they have handles on them. You can drag them around and move them if you need to. Um, and that way we can do a tomato. And then I also, in the same pot, I put in a basil and a marigold as well. You know, I love those, that pairing right there. So we have, um, um, we have a lot of those around and we like to do a lot of, of the combination of those two together, uh, those three together. Um, and that 20 gallon works perfect for it. And smart pots, you can actually get those through our from seed to spoon app as well from parkseed.com. Um, we have them for sale on there. And also I want to make sure if you guys didn't hear earlier, there's free shipping. If you are a, um, if you are a premium membership for our one year premium, um, you get free shipping for, our, for everything. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that again, just in case you were not there earlier. Um, yeah, so I did see a few questions about the, um, about the fabric. So I will mention we did have to water them maybe a little bit more frequent, um, but Definitely not as, uh, it, it wasn't a huge difference we noticed whenever we first shifted over to them. Um, yeah, I, I'd say maybe like one day sooner than the others. I mean, we generally didn't have to water that much more. And that's actually a benefit is that they actually soak out of the fabric because then it prevents overwatering and things like that. Uh, sorry, I can't read it. Okay. How do you protect container plants from squirrels? Okay, so I will say we love doing um, the, oh my gosh, I, my, my it, it always blinks. That's Motion sprinkler. activated sprinkler. Thank you. I, I always want to, <laughs> all of those words just jumble in my head for some reason. Yeah, so motion activated sprinkler is going to be the best way to handle squirrels. Yes. A lot of those different pests. Um, also like a fence, but obviously they squirrels are tough because they oh, climb yeah. all the fences. We have a dog that helps with that too. Um, I know like they, they say like the, the fake owls and things like that too can help um, with things like that. But honestly, that motion activated sprinkler is always going to be the, uh, our go-to at least. It helps a lot with that. Catching up on questions. One second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a great question for you here. Oh, Wendy. Yes. What do you use cinnamon basil for? I love cinnamon basil. I use it in a lot of things, but so probably my favorite thing to use cinnamon basil for is the, um, I make this sweet potato and carrot, uh, mixture. I roast them together and I put cinnamon basil on that. Um, but honestly like cinnamon basil on carrots is amazing. And on sweet potatoes just alone, it's amazing. It adds a really unique and almost sweet flavor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love cinnamon basil. The taste of it is incredible. We're also going to be growing more cut flowers this year. And I think it's going to be a great thing to add in to the, to that type of stuff as well. Yeah. It's really pretty. Cinnamon basil is gorgeous. Yes. And so that, that's another reason I like <laughs> to grow it too, because it has purple again, like the, whenever it does flower and on the tips, it has like a purpley tint. It's very pretty. Um, question here from Cheryl about insect netting. Yes. So 
it won't protect everything. That's for sure. I mean, things can definitely get through insect netting, but it'll reduce 90% it'll of your definitely, problems. Definitely. Yeah. Sure. It'll definitely help. Um, just make sure that you do remove it. Like whenever they're flowering. Yes. I was just about to say that, um, that you do remove them whenever they're flowering. Um, and that I would just use them whenever they're younger typically. And then, and then remove it afterwards. Um, cause when they're younger, they're going to be a lot more sensitive as well and can't handle any sort of, you know, any sort of issue. So for sun drying, my favorite ones are going to be the cherry tomatoes and the smaller tomatoes. It's just a lot less work and a lot faster. Yeah. Um, the new one that I was excited about, the Fantabulous or what was it called? Fabulous. Fabulous. Right? Or Fantastico. There it Fantastico. Was. Is that it? There it was. Yeah. That one specifically calls out being great for sun, for sun drying as well. Okay. One more question for you, then we will announce our winners. Okay. Oh, I, I did uh, mention this already. Oh, I you think, did? I think you were gone. Yep. So I, you walked in at the very tail end of that. I was mentioning okay. we have them on the app as well as um, parksy.com. Did you I mention they're 15% off? I app. did not mention 15% off. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we make a say, good team. So you can say 15% on everything using our app. Again, I'll also mention that you can get free shipping. If you are a yearly subscriber to the CD Spoon app as well, it also comes with free shipping. And let's find out who is going to be the newest person that is getting free shipping. So Andrew mm. has our winners. And awesome. And our first winner, Nin Huntries. Did I say it right? Nin Huntress. Huntress. Nin Huntress. Yeah, Nin Huntress. I like it. Yep, so you are the winner of the one-year premium subscription to the Seed to Spoon app. This is going to come with unlimited planting. You're going to be able to add as many plants as you want. You're going to have access to additional calendar features that let you see all of your plants and in, in like a, a timeline of when they're going to be available to plant. You get unlimited access to GrowBot as well as uh, first access to new features that we're going to be releasing and all of that as well. So uh, congratulations. And now let's find out who's getting the park seed biodome. Yeah. So this biodome, I will say we grow, whenever we start all of our seeds indoors, we always use this park seed biodome. It's amazing. It, we have an amazing germination rate. It works. It, it's just, yeah, it's just so easy to use. Always works. Like I it's clicked, great. I clicked the button next. You did. Time. Okay. Well, congrats to who? I didn't see the name. I don't know. So. Is it showing for them? Because it's there. It is. It's okay. Not showing. Okay. <laughs> I did, was like, I didn't see the winner. Um, so <laughs> Cheryl, congratulations, Cheryl. Um, you can get your tomatoes started in a biodome. Woo. Um, so yes. Yeah, so Cheryl, email us at info at seedtospoon.net as well as Nin Huntress, and we will get you guys set up with your free stuff. Awesome. Okay, so do we have any more questions that we uh, need to come back to? Looking and if anybody now. does have any um, any any questions at all, feel free to pop them in into the chat, and uh, we can uh, answer them. We'll be here for a few more minutes answering a few questions. Do we have some pinned up there. Um, keep an eye on here. I hear the baby though. I'm okay. going to go grab him again. So thanks everyone for joining. It's been awesome. I'm going to leave Carrie by herself here. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I mean, if we don't have any other questions or anything, um, if you guys are watching this after the fact, we, we will have this recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. So we, you guys can come back to it and, and rewatch it or anything like that. So, um, and same as all of our last ones that we have had out. Um, so if you've missed any of our last workshops about seed starting indoors or anything like that, um, make sure that you check those out on our uh, on under our live section on our YouTube channel. And um, if you aren't already following us, make sure you follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and also on TikTok. I mean, everywhere you can imagine, we are there too. And I post daily just random tips and tricks and things that we're doing in our garden. So uh, I hope to see you all there. And then again, we're going to be doing a, another workshop next week. We'll, we have these every week, so make sure that you guys join us there. Um, here, real quick, I do see Nin Hundress asked, 
Um, so info at seedtospoon.net. Andrew, could you pull that up for me? So that way she can see it. Oh, she sees it. email. Okay. Real good. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everybody. You all have a great rest of your day and hopefully I will see you all next week. Thank you.